Hey y'all, Michelle Barraza here with Finding Yourself SATX Life Coaching, helping you find your best self since 2017. Today we're going to talk about Dr. Gibson's self-care for adult children of emotionally immature parents. Last time we covered chapter one, and this time we're going to chapter, uh, cover chapters two and three. So chapter one was build a better relationship with yourself, and chapters two and three are you have the right to be here and a case of mistaken identity. Um, I just got contact, so I'm trying them out and I'm trying not to blink a hundred times. I haven't worn them since college, so they're a little uncomfortable. Um, thanks for everyone for, who entered into last week's raffle. Uh, the winners have been contact, contacted independently. If you're interested in getting a free digital coaching package from us, um, please go to our website, www.findingyourselfsatx.com. There in the contact section, you can get my email address and send me an email. I'll go ahead and send you a discount code so that you can get the digital coaching package for free. All right, without further ado, we will dive in. <clears throat> Chapter two, you have the right to be here. Injuries to self-esteem come from feeling that your uniqueness was rejected. When someone mentions having low self-esteem, I think of that old cartoon with the man in the doctor's office complaining of a headache as he sits there with an arrow stuck through his head. The joke is that the headache is the least of his worries and that this is the same story and, th and that this is the same story with low self-esteem. People with poor self-esteem have a deeper problem than they think. The deeper problem is that somewhere along the way, someone has made them feel uncertain about whether they deserve to be here at all. There are countless people walking around, holding jobs, and raising children who continue to question whether or not they're entitled to be here in the first place. They never quite have that rock-solid feeling that they belong and are valued. They may think that their roles and jobs are worthwhile, but they are not so sure about the inner essence of themselves. Yet all children come into this world with an unquestioning self-acceptance of their needs, which is the root source of all self-esteem. A person with secure self-esteem knows the reality of his or her inner needs and knows that those needs are worthy of fulfillment. Doubting the legitimacy of these needs undermines the, undermines the very foundation of one's self-worth. People with low self-esteem come into my office wondering, what's the matter with me? But I think instead, what happened to you? I think this because I know these people did not enter the world feeling flawed or doubting their right to be here. That is, not until they encountered the bow and arrow of another person's rejection or criticism. Ask yourself just who it was in your life that enjoyed archery so much. EI parents often carry quivers filled with debasing comments to shoot at you. Low self-esteem is exactly like going through life with the head full of their arrows. You cannot think without running into those internalized, sharp, piercing arrowheads. Injuries to self-esteem come from feeling that your uniqueness was rejected. People with low self-esteem carry this story in their body language. They are constantly trying to make themselves appear absent. Yet the longing for life and belonging is so strong that even arrow-shy people may one day question their low opinion of themselves. They wake up to their existential right to be here and express what they need, finally overcoming their low self-esteem. It is up to each and every one of us to sit ourselves down and accept that because we are here, we are supposed to be here. Once you have settled that question for yourself and figured out who the archers were in your life, it is no longer just about improving self-esteem. It expands into the joys of self-expression and the right to self-protection. Self-esteem means you have decided you have the right to be here, and on top of that, to enjoy it too. So in the last chapter, uh, one of the key takeaways, uh, give me just one second, y'all, hold on. 
one of the uh, key takeaways was monitoring your own energy levels. And so by focusing on your energy levels, when something makes you feel drained or something gives you energy, that is a cue as to whether it's good for you or bad for you. Now, that doesn't mean that you stop taking care of your responsibilities in life, but stuff that is not necessarily something you need to do, but rather a social event that you were invited to or something that you feel is an obligation but may not quite be an obligation. If you monitor your energy levels, it'll help you understand as to whether that thing is feeding you, feeding your soul or taking away your energy. Um, and so that's very important from chapter one. Now here she's talking about you have the right to be here. And she says, you wake up to your existential right to be here and express what you need. The longing for life and belonging is so strong that even arrow shy pe people may one day question their low opinions of themselves. They wake up to their existential right to be here and express what they need. Now, some of you may say, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to be here. What do you mean I'm supposed to be here? And so what I would say to that is you are as much supposed to be here as the next person. None of us chooses. None of us chooses to be born. None of us chooses who or what family we're born into. And we don't control how we're raised. So if you look at the person next to you, especially nowadays, right, with social media, you look at their beautiful lives, their wonderful vacations, all of the joys that they're sharing on social media, it's all fucking fake. It's fake. They're not sharing on social media the times that they sat in the fetal position crying in their bed because they couldn't get out of bed that day. Nobody's going to share that shit. So yeah, you have the right to be here. Nobody chose to be born. Nobody chose who or what family to be born to. You have the right to be here just as much as the next person. And your struggles, you may share them with trusted friends and family, or you may not. But the person that you admire and that you think is perfect, they have the same struggles or different struggles than you, but they're struggling. Everybody is struggling with their own thing. And so you do have the right to be here. You have the right to be here. You have the right to take up space and you have the right to be seen and heard. It's really important to make that connection with some people in your life that really see you, really hear you and don't judge you. And that may be your family, but most likely if you're watching this video about self-care for adult children of emotionally immature parents, it's not. You're not seen. You're not heard. You're expected to take care of everybody else and you're just expected to be, right? And nobody asks you if you're doing okay. So you need to find people in your life who will take that time and ask you, are you doing okay? I had a friend ask me today, how are your stress levels? And I can't tell you how much that meant to me because here I am, right? Michelle Raza, life coach. I'm coaching everybody. I'm helping everybody. But somebody stopped and asked me, how are your stress levels? And that's really important. So you need those reciprocal relationships with people that you can trust, that you can be open and vulnerable with, and they see you and hear you and they don't judge you. You do have a right to be here. All right. <clears throat> Chapter three. A case of mistaken identity. Nobody finds it easy to be someone else. I always notice it when a person in therapy says, that's just not me, or another favorite. I'm not the kind of person who... When people talk about themselves this way, I can hear the tiny, the tinny echo of a distorted self-concept. Their denial just does not ring true. Instead, it sounds like a hand-me-down belief that the person took on about herself or himself, like something picked up at the flea market of, an, of other people's opinions. What such individuals are rejecting is a trait or behavior that doesn't fit their overly narrow concept of themselves. Maybe that tinny off note I heard was the sound of anxiety 
about stepping outside of their family's concept of them imposed by EI parents. A rigid or easily threatened parent will make it very clear that certain traits and behaviors are bad and deserve rejection or punishment. At the same time, such a parent may show warmth or approval if the child acts in ways that the parent can relate to. When a child's nature is compatible with the parent's personality, there is harmony inside the child because the child fits nicely into the parent's expectations. The child feel, feels secure being similar to mom or dad. Such identification allows for both connection and growth. But when children have to be something they are not in order to please the adults, especially EI parents, anxiety, shame, or depression soon follow. They start to feel like an imposter or feel they never do things well enough. That is because at some level, the parent has given them the message they ought to be different than what they really are. These children must strain to fit in. Naturally cooperative, malleable children, which fits the description of internalizer children with EI parents, will try hard to convince themselves that they must be wrong because the parent must be right. These children form an identity based on what they think they should be. Traits that don't fit are disowned. Maybe this could work if it were not for the tremendous energy it takes to not be who you really are. The more you must please a parent, the less energy you have for mature self-development and finding your own path. Burying your true nature for the sake of family acceptance is both physically and emotionally exhausting. Your ambitions, attractions, interests, and dreams tell you who you really are. They pull you toward the things that give you the best return on your efforts. Following them increases energy, optimism, and hopefulness because they are inherently empowering. They may cause anxiety if EI parents disapprove. But just remember that anxiety is often the byproduct of growth. We all feel a little odd or scared when we try a new behavior. So if you catch yourself saying, I'm not that kind of person, ask yourself, how do I know that? Is it true deep in your soul or is it because you were made to feel uncomfortable about those interests? Part of the fun of doing psychotherapy is watching people start to ask themselves these questions as they open up to being different from how their family saw them. There is nothing like the joy that comes up when you discover that your inhibitions and self-limiting beliefs were just a case of mistaken identity. So in this case, it, it may be a good idea to write out a list of things that you admire about other people and that you feel that you maybe are not or cannot do. And start, so make that list, which can take a while. And then with time, start trying on those things. So like something silly, like I can't wear a bikini. Maybe put that on a list and the next time you find yourself at a swimming pool or the beach, try on a bikini and notice that as long as you're comfortable in what you're wearing, nobody else really cares. I mean, it's not that people don't care about you. It's just you have to be comfortable in your own skin. Maybe you had an overprotective parent who would never let you skate or something for the sake of falling. And now you're an adult and you feel like you feel like you would look like an idiot if you tried something like skating. So try it. I mean, nobody cares. Nobody's going to laugh at you. If anything, if you fall, people will stop and help you and try to get you to, to stand up and keep skating and learn. It's exciting to watch somebody learning something new and trying on something new and growing. 
And I think it's human nature to want to help each other when you see somebody stumble. So make a list of all the things that you wish you had done when you were younger and that for some reason or another you were told no, that you couldn't, that it wasn't okay, and start doing them. As long as you're not hurting somebody else, you really should take the time to explore those things that brought you light or even the thought of it brought you light in childhood and you just couldn't do it because you had overbearing parents who wouldn't let you. You want to go bungee jump? Go bungee jump. Go jump out of a plane. Read a book. Maybe you were the type that, you know, you always wanted to just finish a novel from beginning to end, but you didn't get a chance because you had too many other responsibilities. So read something just for fun. Read a trashy novel. Read read something that you consider, you know, not you're not learning anything from it. It's just for entertainment. Or draw. Go take a drawing class that, you know, maybe you were always told your drawing sucked or you can't sing or something, right? Get out there and sing karaoke. Sing bad karaoke. It's fucking fun. And everybody will laugh and they'll all be drunk and they don't care. It, it honestly just putting yourself out there and doing things that are outside of your comfort zone and and like I said making a list think about some somebody that you admire it can be a celebrity but again remember people only put the good out there they're not going to put their real life out there but make a list of either somebody in real life that you know that you admire and the things that they do or a celebrity then the things that they do within your means, obviously, right? <laughs> you can't fly a jet somewhere, drain, drain your life savings and get on a jet, maybe not. But within reason, start making that list, start doing those things that make you feel really uncomfortable, but that you really want to do and that you always wanted to do. That inner critical voice that you hear that tells you that you can't do things, it's often the voice of our overly critical parents. And so it's really important the way that you talk to yourself is the way that you should talk to a small child in your life whom you love. And that could be your child, or it could be a niece or a nephew, or even if you just want to maybe start going to a, a boys and girls club or a mentoring program, you wouldn't talk to them the way you talk to yourself in your head. So change the way you talk to yourself and talk to yourself as you would a small child that you love. And that'll start changing how you interact with other people in the world, how nice you are to yourself when you mess up because everybody messes up and nobody's perfect. So give it a try. Make a list. All right, y'all. Thanks for spending time with me today. I think last week I didn't do a short. I don't think I did a short this week. Um, they're really hard to do. <laughs> Shorts are really hard to do. Um, but anyway, check out my website, www.findingyourselfsatx.com. Email me if you want a free copy of the digital uh, coaching package. Depending on how many people contact me, I often give out more than one a week. So please do contact me if you're interested. Um, why do I give it away for free? Honestly, because I'm, I'm not here. I, this, what I do for you guys on YouTube, um, is it's a hobby. I, I don't make income from it. I'm not at the uh, magical thousand that you need for that. I really just like sharing what I've learned and helping people. And um, the digital coaching package just really helps you build out your goals. And so if you have an accountability partner, then it, you can achieve your goals. But if you don't have an accountability partner, that's where you would hire me. So I'm happy to give it away for free. I want you guys to do better. I want you to be able to achieve your goals. And the first step there is just even writing them down, right? Because most people don't write them down. They have all these things in their head, but they don't write it down. So best of luck to you. We'll talk in a couple weeks. Take care, y'all. Have a good night.